The Charade Frontier SCHF 36M. This is an excellent little survival knife, bushcraft knife. And we're going to take a good look at it. We're going to run it through some tests. Uh, but one of the things about Schrade is they've been around since 1904. Uh, they did close their doors back in the 70s. And uh, Taylor Brands, who was in business from 1975 until now, bought Schrade and has really changed the whole face of the Schrade name. Really making really great, versatile knives for survival. Uh, for tactical purposes and for bushcraft. Uh, they've really put a, a lot of different designs. And so we're going to take a look at this little compact yet very sturdy blade, which I think makes an excellent choice for survival. And speaking of survival, it does come with this nylon sheath. Uh, it has a little Velcro keeper here. And what's really cool is they have a fire steel with a striker. Also, a sharpening stone and this is some kind of diamond sharpening stone probably about uh, I would say 600 grit and it just keeps it handy and the sheath itself is nylon it has the little velcro keeper here but what I really like it has snaps here I don't like velcro right here with the snaps so it gives it a little more security it does have a tie down for your leg with some uh, cordage the back is a velcro that makes it easy to put on your belt so it gives you a loop but you can also attach it with your belt on. So this gives you really great tools. Of course, fire and a knife are two of the most important tools you can have in survival. And then being able to keep it sharpened is also great. Now the 8CR13 MOV is also the steel used in the Tenacious, which has been a really proven design uh, by Spyderco. The steel on this knife is not extremely exceptional. It's good. It's a medium use knife. I mean, you can use this steel for all kind of different tasks. It's going to hold up very well. Uh, it's not going to be the best in any necessary specifics, but it's going to be a, it's going to hold up very well. And one of the things about that is it keeps the price low. Uh, one of the things about this knife to me that is just unbelievable is the MSRP on this is about $70. But I have found this in a number of places for around the $42 range. Uh, in fact, FletcherAndersons.com uh, is a great source for these knives. And what's even better is they extend a lifetime warranty on all their products. So you can spend 42 bucks on a knife like this, have a lifetime warranty, but honestly, I don't think you're going to need it. <laughs> the blade is just over 5 inches. The overall length is just under 10.5 inches. It is a full tang design, as you can see right here, with these really beautiful micarta handles. And that's where the 36M comes into play. Uh, the regular black version has some, uh, some kind of polycarbonate type uh, grips that are really very durable. But I like the gripping of this. It's really smooth, but yet where you want it to have some texture, it does. While it's smooth right here, where really it's going to have the comfort, where you need the texturing, the micarta comes through right here and right here. So it gives you a little bit of a feel of comfort. Also right here before you get to the blade. Has a nice choil here on the grip and then it has an excellent choil at the front. Uh, it, the shape itself, it's curved low so it's going to ride nice in your hand. And then it has a rise right here. Of course underneath you have this jimping that's really nice and full and aggressive. But really it doesn't push on your hand too much because it's fairly wide. Uh, same thing underneath. It does have a really nice pommel and this of course with a lanyard loop. It's going to give you even crushing abilities or a non-lethal option if you're in a fighting situation. It is full tang and one of the things about the spine on this knife is it's just under a quarter of an inch. I think it's 0.23 inches. So it's a really hefty knife. I really like that for field use. Uh, with the drop point you're going to have a really strong tip and that tip is just solid. It's going to be great for piercing. It is a shallow, hollow grind. Uh, and really, the knife itself is going to be able to cut very well, even though for the thickness of the blade. The finger choil right here is going to give you great gripping for detailed work. And then, of course, you have a choil back here. And this is going to keep it from slipping in your hand, which is really important, especially when you're piercing or stabbing. It has hex screws on each side, and these are really lot large and solid. 
The powder coat itself is one of the complaints though that's been from a lot of different reviewers and people that have uh, experienced this knife out in the field. Uh, sometimes it will chip off. Uh, it will give you some corrosion resistance though even though the blade is stainless. So it's going to be a great outdoor knife. Uh, once this thing gets dirty and once I put it through its test, which I'm getting ready to do, uh, we're going to find out really how this cleans up is really a big thing. A lot of guys are actually stripping this material off of the blade. It has charade on one side and here on the other the model number, the SCHF36M. The weight on the knife, 13 and a half ounces. So it does have some nice heft to it. And heft is going to be really important when you get it out into the field. Uh, especially if you're doing some chopping, some batoning. Uh, having that extra weight on this knife is going to be exceptional. Uh, a lot of guys that do bushcraft, they like to keep their knives fairly lightweight or as light as they possibly can and still be effective. Uh, with a survival knife, you really want it to be capable of a lot of different tasks. Not just your standard bushcraft task, but things that you may need it for, including a, a self-defense option. And I think that this knife is definitely up to it. The balance of the knife is very well centered. It's right here where your finger is going to rest anyway naturally. So if the balance is right here, that's really going to give you both an even weight distribution between the blade and the handle. The spine has a 90 degree angle, which really makes it nice to be able to strip wood and bark, especially for fire starting, uh, and also can be used with the fire steel very effectively if for some reason you don't have the striker. Well, I can attest that this is not necessarily a good throwing knife. Doing this little test sure did beat the crap out of this. And you know what? Scales held up well. And that's what I was really concerned about. I probably threw this thing about 20 times before I got it to actually stick. Except the one time I got it to stick at a camera angle. Here we got a nice piece of cedar. This stuff is hard, as you can see the red in the core. And uh, this stuff is excellent for burning as well. I definitely like to have a little bit longer knife than this. Uh, it is short, but in a pinch it can work. And it's whatever you have on hand. That's what makes a survival knife. It's an all around knife that's capable of different tasks. Not necessarily the best task, but capable. Even with my bare hand, this is the shock on this blade is really subdued. I guess it's because of the weight of the blade, but there's no shock. The grips really hold up well. They feel comfortable. I'm not getting any hot spots on my hand where I feel like it's really hurting. The one thing I am getting is tired because it's taking a lot to cut through this. This is one hard piece of wood. Boy is it beautiful though. We're going to go ahead and baton through this wood. I didn't take a piece of the cedar to use as my baton, but um, 
because this stuff is so flipping hard. But one of the great things is I think this knife can handle it. I've got a decent piece of birch here. Well, not so decent. Okay, round two, I'm going to take a piece of that cedar. Cuts right through it. The great thing about batoning is you can really get your wood down to a small level. You can have your kindling along with your regular wood to burn. And once you get into the core, even if wet conditions, it's usually fairly dry. Even taking this really lightweight cedar stick and going through the rest of this, I just want to show how little effort it takes for this knife to cut through that hard core of the cedar. Oh yeah. Using the striker, once you get some of this material off, using the striker, and I use the side of the striker, I mean that's how quick it lights. And this is a pretty decent little striker. I like to use these shavings. They're cedar shavings for fires. They really work great. Just go ahead and break this up. Get it really, you wanna create almost like a bird's nest making these fine fibers makes it really easy to catch fire. You can use any type of bark, but these cedar shavings really work well. Now that we've got our nest starting to burn, we can put some of our little cedar pieces on here. One of the downsides, of course, is this powder coating. You're gonna beat it up, it's gonna mess it up. And uh, this is a tool, it's used for you know, survival, for outdoors. It's not necessarily used to look pretty. Uh, this is to be used in the field. It's used to save your life. And using this tool is important. A lot of guys will strip that powder coat off. I've seen a couple do it. Uh, and so, you know, that may be a good thing if you're into that. I mean, for me, I've got my Safe Queens. This is definitely for the money. Uh, it's just a beater, and I love it. One of the things about this, too, is once you use it, and it's fairly inexpensive, you know, you don't feel bad about doing this to it. You know, you guys have seen when I've taken a $600 knife and done the same to it. And, you know, yeah, it probably held up a little better as far as the finish. But seriously, for $45, I'm not too worried about it. Now, of course, after abusing this knife like I have and then watching a lot of the reviews on YouTube about this finish on the knife uh, and how that it's just done. When you screw it up, it is. It flakes off and a lot of other things. I don't know if I got a different batch or if this knife just was cleaned properly the way I did it. Uh, I'm going to show you the way that I cleaned it. But I'll tell you what, guys, this looks really close to the original finish. Now, I used a little bit of carburetor cleaner to get it started just to break up a lot of the debris. Uh, and then I used some penetrating oil, and I noticed that there was uh, it pretty much got most of everything off. Then I took just some regular CLP, break free, and gave it a good lube. Uh, and you can see it really took that dirt and all the scuffs and everything. I mean, there's some little abrasions on the surface, but it didn't penetrate the surface. I did use one of these small little nylon brushes to get everything off as well. You can use a toothbrush. Uh, always good to save those old toothbrushes. You can always use them for cleaning. The powder coat really held up well. You can see the little scuffs, uh, but it didn't penetrate the surface. Right here where I was using the fire steel, it definitely, uh, you know, nicked it. But, I mean, you're going against fire steel right on that edge. So, you know, there's a little bit of wear. But, um, again, I, I'm just really uh, pleased because after seeing a lot of reviews, I was really expecting not to be able to restore this knife. And now it looks great. 
I mean, yeah, it's got some nicks, but you know what? That's what makes it look even better. There's nothing worse than a pristine, perfect knife that you've got sitting in a safe. Take that thing out and use it. And the moral to that story is use YouTube videos as a reference, including mine, and then go out and test it on your own. It'll give you a good idea of what you're looking for, but don't always take everybody's word for it. Now my initial thoughts on the sheath was it was flimsy and cheap, but you know, for a knife of this price, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, but I'll tell you, what really surprised me was it's so comfortable. I mean, it's soft, it fits right to your leg, uh, it was really easy to use. Now while this might not hold up like a Kydex or a really rigid, uh, heavily stitched sheath, this is really comfortable to wear and I think it's just an excellent little sheath. I was really surprised. I think I put this knife through its paces for what it's capable of. Uh, an excellent knife. If you're on a budget, great. If you want something that you just don't feel bad about beating up, this will also hold up. And if you want more information about the new Shrade line, you can go to TaylorBrandsLLC.com and I'll have a link down below in the description. Uh, just a great source, a lot of different designs I think that could fit your need. There is a larger version of this that I think may even be better for survival. Uh, but still, this one is very capable and it's going to be compact. Honestly, this is about the size that I like for survival applications. So the SCHF 36M, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. One of the things about Schrade is they've been in business since one <laughs> one thousand four. <laughs> That's an old knife company.